Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup. This is the Linux News Edition. The cool things that are going on in Linux this week. And uh, we got some cool stuff coming in. First, we have the Linux kernel 6.7 officially released, which is good. That means the reign of evil is over. Uh, kernel 6.6.6 didn't end up doing too much of a mess. In fact, I think we, is that the one we passed by super quick? Because there are some issues, particularly with Debian. Uh, was that 665, I think? I don't know. 665, see, the, the devil was in the details trying to force us up to 666, but we got 6.7 now. So uh, 6.7, this is one of their larger kernel uh, upgrades. They had a lot of different things. Uh, we now have experimental file system, the bcachefs. Um, I've not actually heard of this before reading this, but uh, bcachefs is supposed to work much better for AB type systems. So think Nix OS, Android phones, and um, uh, I think Fedora Silverblue also uses an AB system, although I'm not completely sure about that one. I know for sure Nix OS does. So this is a huge uh, file system boost on Nix. Uh, I'm assuming they'll probably be looking at it. It's supposed to be much faster than ZFS and much more secure than ButterFS. So apparently it is the uh, the holy grail of uh, file systems. I'll believe that when I see it, but hey, that's what, at least what they're saying. You have the option to enable or disable 32-bit emulation in x86-64 kernels. So if you still need to do something with 32-bit somewhere, you can turn that on. We have Intel Meteor Lake graphics support. Uh, some NVIDIA GPU system processor support. We have uh, DP Alt Mode 2.1 support for the USB Type C drivers. Uh, AMD Seamless Boot works wide uh, better with a wider range of AMD hardware. F2FS is now uh, now able to support large page sizes. Uh, ButterFS buffs, and we have App Armor access control. We have uh, KVM gained support for viol uh, virtualization in Long Arch. Long Arch. KVM on Risk V supports SMS stats and extension. I have no idea what that one is. I need to get into some Risk. Um, I don't know if I never know if it's Risk V or Risk V. Let me know. Is it Risk V or Risk V? <laughs> it's kind of like, uh, uh, you know, do uh, Roman doctors refer to an IV as four? <laughs> I'm going to put a four in your arm. What? <laughs> uh, we have some rust tweaks. We have um, adjustments. We have um, video buff is removed. We have some Logitech tweaks. And you can read all about the different changes inside the Linux kernel over there. So there's some new updates coming and down. Some people have actually said they've already installed it on a, on some Ubuntu systems using the uh, unsupported channels. And uh, they said it works fine. So if you wanted to play around with it, you can. Uh, there is a, a new place to get cubes. Uh, so Star um, Star Labs computers, at least this one particular Star Labs, Star Labs computer, is officially certified to run Cubes OS. So if you're wanting to run Cubes and you want to get like officially supported hardware for it, uh, Star, uh, Star Labs. Now, the downside is the minimum system requirements is $1,000. Um, and this is one of the things that I've always said that we need to fix in the Linux world. Linux runs way better than any other system on lower spec computers. Where are the companies selling me a $500 Linux laptop? Come on, guys. Why? Why not? Uh, I think that that would be a huge boost for Linux. I mean, I'd, I'd buy that. So um, the announcement is over on Star Labs and on Cubes OS. Uh, so the, to be a Cubes certified OS, the company has to have a commitment to ship the exact same hardware for at least one year. Uh, so these start at a Core i3, which I'm not a huge fan of the i3 processor, uh, and, or you have an i7. You don't have an i5 in the middle, though. I would probably want to do like an i5. That's one of the ones I typically run it on. I did look over at the um, over at the system. You do have the option to get a Ryzen 7 on it as well. So that's not listed here in the article. But if you head on over to Star Labs site and configure this computer with cubes, you can get a Ryzen processor as well. You only have one option. That's the Ryzen 7, and I forget what system. But this will get you the latest Cubes release 4.2 and uh, that'd be a really cool thing to do. And I believe Star Labs does ship international. They are EU company, so you should be able to get them in the United States. But of course, you guys over in the EU uh, can pick them up. 
And Pipewire camera support is coming soon to OBS Studio for Linux desktops. This is actually a big deal uh, because getting the camera portals to work through Pipewire may very well solve a lot of the Wayland issues. And I know some people have said, I have no problems on Wayland. Yeah, you're not like a content creator that's constantly having to do screenshots and things. The things I had to do to get uh, to get screen recording working to do those Debian tutorials I did on native hardware because Wayland sucks. <laughs> okay. It just does. It's, I understand that X has some problems and that it's old and hasn't been updated for a while, uh, which isn't 100% true. But the problem is Wayland is not prime time for universal applications. This is one of the things, although I'm not going to be inclined to use OBS to record a basic desktop, I want something like simple screen recorder or something simple like that. And I really didn't find any good options. So I'm still running it through the capture card. Yeah, go figure. Um, literally running this mainstreaming computer, running a capture card into the Ryzen laptop to record those Debian videos. You're welcome. So, uh, but this might solve some of the issues, at least on the OBS end. Although some people have said they've had no problem with Wayland and OBS. But uh, even according to the fairly up-to-date links in the article I did looking at some of the criticisms of Wayland, even OBS was saying, yeah, we're not really actively supporting it. But this would actually get camera functionality working through Pipewire. Now, camera functions will work in, in many other places as well. Uh, but as far as getting them to work in a better protocol, Pipewire is a much easier, much more streamlined protocol to get it working on. So this is actually good. So we'll see what happens with this down the way. We're probably expected to see this, obviously, no earlier than uh, 31, since we are already on OBS Studio 30. I say this as I'm streaming and recording this on 25. But hey, 25 works for me. 27 crashed like the the, the Dixies and uh, the um, OBS 30 so far on the other laptop is working pretty well. So we'll see. And on to our final article here. Um, Ubuntu wants to move snaps beyond the Ubuntu distribution. So they're actually bringing on some of the formerly laid off snap developers to work on a strategy to get snaps passed beyond Ubuntu. Of course, they're like, hey, we have this great system and very few people are using it. Now, if you're using, for a while, I'm not sure if it still is, for a while, Snap was a dependency in Pomac. So if you're running Arch and you ran Pomac for a while, it would ins automatically install Snap. That might have been taken out as the last time I booted up Manjaro, the Snap option was actually gone from Pomac. So uh, I think that might have been taken out down the road from when I last installed Pomac a couple years ago on my, um, on my Endeavor OS PC. Uh, or maybe it was the particular version I had from the AUR, I don't know. But uh, basically, they're coming in saying, hey, people aren't just buying, adopting this stuff out of the box. Like, they're top adopting Flatpak. We need more, more support. We need more distros supporting it. It's like... <laughs> Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So they're bringing on people to talk about uh, how they can possibly do that. Of course, they don't really have any details about it, but there's only one thing in here that suggests they're listening, and that is that uh, they they have listened to the criticism on multiple aisles. I could, where's it at? Uh, anyway, it's in here somewhere. They talked about the, uh, they listened to a lot of concerns on on from every single direction. So if you want my opinion, I'm not like fundamentally against snap packs because it's snap and it's canonical. I'm not against that at all. I am not a fan of snap because number one, they overrode many apt packages with snap packages. Number two, it is a centralized proprietary distribution method. Even though the snap itself is allegedly uh, open source, you could really open it up and audit it, whatever else. The distribution method is centralized and proprietary. If you really want to capture the heart of the Linux people, you got to completely do away with those two things. Completely open up all the source code and completely decentralize it. That's why Flatpak is so supported by distributions and everyone looks at snaps, uh, snaps like they're you know watching some comedy show. <laughs> You know, um, and then, of course, there's some tactical specs. They're lower. They have poor performance. They have some issues with interacting and playing nicely with the rest of the system. A lot of this is for security for sandboxing purposes. But, you know, if the system is so stinking secure that I can't functionally use it, 
screw it. I'm going to go back with something that works because it's like, it's perfect. It's secure. You just can't use it for anything, but you know, so that really is, is a thought they they're moving towards this. I'm not sure if it's going to happen because we have app images, we have flat packs, we have snaps and snaps are very controversial. Not a lot of people like them. So, uh, but if you ask me, that's what they need to do. Open source that distribution method and decentralize the platform. And that will go a long way towards, uh, towards it. Well, if you want to help support the channel, we do have a Patreon page, patreon.com slash T O M M. You can jump on over there. That'll help support all of the different channels that we have. We have uh, science fiction short stories. The one I'm working on this week is a beauty, uh, drawing in from some past life experiences on this one. So it's got some grittiness to it. Uh, and I hope it's going to be done by the 15th because, uh, I have, I have, um, Act one and act two are done. Act three is mostly done. Um, I'm going to hope to get up early tomorrow morning and if not finish it, get very close. Uh, so we might be, if nothing else, I should be able to at least get the text up on the 15th and release the audiobook a couple days later. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Uh, but uh, you can get all access to those and the past short stories I've had as well over there on uh, patreon.com com slash t o m m with that thanks for watching and i hope that you enjoy switching to linux thank you for watching this video from switched to linux this channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now you can be a supporter at patreon at patreon.com slash t o m m or at thinklifemedia.com i also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.